Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this day you've given unto us. We thank you for this opportunity once again to hear your word. We pray that, O oh God, what you have prepared for us, we will be listening to unto it. But Lord, we don't want to be just the hearers, but help us to be the one doing it and going according to this word. That whatsoever you have used here, Elijah, to do, that we will be also emulating, learn from it, O oh God, in Jesus' name. We thank you because you have heard us, O oh God. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Quickly, we want to remind ourselves on what we learned in the previous uh, lesson, which was Josaphat and equal yoke. Josaphat went together to make a covenant with Ahab, which God didn't like. Because already Ahab was having a curse that God had laid upon him and his generation. So, we are going to look at today, Elijah's, or Elijah defended and translated. Elijah defended and then translated. Let's look at our memory verse. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 11. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 11. The Bible says, And it came to pass that as they still went on and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a wheel wind into heaven. We are going to say it together since it's long. So we are going to to repeat after me. Second King chapter 2 verse 11. It came to pass as they went still on as, it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up by a wee wind into heaven. Amen. Can someone read it to us? Our first test, Second Kings chapter 1, from verse 1 to 18. You can read it for us if you are there. Yes, Second Kings chapter 1, from verse 1 to 18. Chapter 1, verse 1 to 18. Yes. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Israel. And Ahaziah fell down to him, that is, in his upper chamber, that was in Samaria, and was sick, and sent his messengers, and said unto them, Go, and cry of Dozebub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this disease. But the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Teshbites, Arise, go up to meet the messenger of the king of Samaria, and say unto them, Is it not because there is, is it not because there is not a God in Israel that he goes to inquire of Bezebub the king, the God of Ekron? Now therefore thou said the Lord, Thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but thou surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, Why are ye now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go, turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thou said the Lord, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sendest to inquire of those above the God of Ephraim? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but thou shalt surely die. And he said unto them, what manner of man was he which came up to meet you and told you these words? <coughs> and they answered him, He was an heavy man, a guest to the ghetto of leather, about his loins. Then he said, It is Elijah the first bite. And then the king sent unto then the king sent unto him a captain of fifty with his fifty. And he went back to him, and behold, he sat on top of the hill, and he spake unto him, Thou art Thou man of God, and the king has said, Come down. And Elijah answered and said unto the captain of fifty, 
if I be a man of God, then let fire come from heaven and consume thee and thy fifty. <coughs> and there came down fire from heaven and consumed him and his fifty. Again also he sent unto him another captain of fifty. <coughs> and he answered and said unto them, O man of God, thou said the king, come down quickly. And Elijah answered and said unto them, If I be a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and consume thee with it, and thy fifty. And, and the fire of God came down from heaven and consumed thee and his fifty. And he sent again a captain of the fifty and his fifty. And the third fifty, and the third captain of fifty went up and came and fell on his knees before Elijah and besought him and said unto him, O oh man of God, I pray thee, let my life, the life of these fifty thy servants, be precious in thy sight. And you, they came fire from, they came fire down from heaven and burnt up the three captains and the former fifties with their fifties. Therefore, let my life be precious in thy sight. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him, be not afraid of him. And he arose and went down with him unto the king. And he said unto him, Thou said the Lord, For as much as thou hast sent messengers from power of God, above the God of Israel, is it not because there is no God in Israel to call of his word? Therefore thou shalt not come off that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. So he died according to the word of the Lord which Elijah has spoken. And Joram and Jehoram reigned in his stead in the second year of in the second year of Joram, the son of Josaphat, king of Judah, <coughs> because he had no son. And now the rest of the half of Ahaziah, which he, which he did, they are not written in the books of Chronicles of the king of Israel. Where is the Lord? We thank God for the reading. Here we could see that when we look at the ministry of Elijah, at a certain point in time, Elijah was a, a prophet of fire, as we all know about the history that Elijah was a prophet of what? Fire. And now we see that he really defended the name of the Lord. And finally, he was raptured. I mean, he was translated. Elijah never saw death. Elijah never falls sick and say, okay, this is after sickness is dead. No, Elijah never happened so. He was raptured. So he was taken away. So we're going to see that. Then let's look at um, right after the ministry of Elijah was about to end, he stood alone to fight for God's what? Glory and honor. So he demonstrated the might that mean, and the power of God. Without any hindrance, he was fearless, of course, and had a great regard for and also was obedient to the word of God. In our test year, we, where we read, we could see that he confronted the sinful act of the what? Of the king. And then the, that wicked king, Ahaziah, when he was sick, this man fell from the top of a, a story building. And when he fell down, that was very weak, sick. Then, instead of you to go and then ask for the man of God, Elijah, Elijah, what happened? He rather went to send for one of the gods, an idol in Ekron, to go and ask. And then when he was going, there's nothing that can be hidden from the sight of God. God knew it and he told Elijah. Elijah went in there and go and met the messengers as they were on the way going to what? Ekron. He told them, don't worry. You want to go and seek whether what will happen and whether he will live or not. Tell, go and tell him that the Lord said he will surely die and he will not get up from his what? bed. So, he, and then one, they told him like this, that a certain man met them and told them that Isaiah got angry. He to repent. He sent people's armies to go and what? Catch Elijah and bring him. So that they will kill him. So when they went there, what happened Elijah? And he was a man of fire. He only commanded fire, then they just consumed them. He sent up to three times. This man was very stubborn. Using human beings, he, does, he doesn't have regards of human life. You send people, people, they kill all of them. You don't even think that oh, human beings, they are people's children that went and died like this. What he wanted is selfish. What he wanted was his own. He still sent another one again. They killed them. He went sent again third time. They killed them. This man was very stubborn. Until the third one, the fourth one, where he sent these people. And but they 
were really guarded what you call what? Wisdom. And they spoke to Elijah in what? In respectful manner, pleading with him. And then, what happened is that the angel of the Lord told him, don't worry, Elijah, now this time around, they hacking to them. Go down with them. When he went there, he told him unto his face exactly what he told the messengers to go and tell him. Right now, it was no more the, the messengers. They were right what? On his face. He told him the right word. Today, if it is you that the Lord is sending you to go to the President of the Republic, to go to this person, great leader of somewhere, and tell him that he should, God is telling him to do this and that and that, will you go? Will you go? You will not say, hey, if I go there, this one, this protocols, this one, this and that and that and that. If they will finish, they will shoot me. Yes, Elijah went there. In those days, King even cried. The kings were more even powerful than the, even the president of today. The kings in those days were more powerful, venerable, than even the leaders of today. Yes, but Elijah went there and spoke with the word, word without word, wavering. First of all, we're going to look at three points. The first one is the courage of Elijah. The courage of what? Elijah. Second, we'll look at the, uh, the companion of Elijah. Who was his companion? Who was his disciple? Who was his fellow or his follower? Then the third one, the chariot of Elijah. First one quickly, we are going to look at... Um, someone to read us. <clears throat> Second King chapter um, 22. Uh, first King chapter 22. First King chapter 22, verse 51. Verse 51 to 53. Okay, let me read it here. So it says, Ahaziah the son of Ahab began to reign over Israel and Samaria, the 17th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, and reigned two years over Israel. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of his what? father and in the way of his mother and in the way of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. For as he served Baal and worshipped him and provoked to anger the Lord God of Israel according to all that his father has done. Praise the Lord. So after the death of the king Ahab, his son Ahaziah, Ahab, the most the, 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 the wicked king in Israel. After he died, it was his son Ahaziah. He came also, he of to ten, he also worked in the foot. In the path, in the ways of his what? Wicked father. And the same judgment that God did pass on the what? His father was the same thing that we what? He passed upon him. He did evil in the sight of God and walked in the ways of his parents. How bad it is having an evil parent, idol worship parent, wicked parent. You decide to follow what they are doing. Follow what they are doing. It's able to do the right thing, to follow the right thing, to take away the anger of God. So, but what happened is that the, the Bible tells us in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 19, it told us that, Yet, yet say ye, why bo, uh, doth not the son bear the uniquity of the what? The fathers, or the father. When the son has done that which was what? Lawful and right, and has kept all the statute and have done them, he shall surely leave the soul that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the uniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the uniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. So whosoever committed sin is the one that will die. That's why sometimes also we have to see that the righteousness of your father. The righteousness of your parents cannot uplift you, cannot overcome and shadow you. Okay, sir, you can do sin, you can commit sin. My father is righteous, my parents are righteous, they are holy, they are empowered with the power of God. Therefore, I don't have any problem. Even once I'm here, I watch this small, uh, this uh, kind of um, uh, short movies on Christianity. This boy who was very uh, rascal, uh, doing, he was a bandit, going here and there. Then, when after you know, what happened, he went to a rose and where they killed him. I think uh, he appeared before the throne and he, it was that for him. He will go there because his father is a great miracle working man, he was a great man of God. After he will go to the grace of God, uh, grace of, of his father is already covering him. No, 
that's what the Bible is telling us in Ezekiel here that the one that is sinning, he will also die. Your sin of your father, the sin of your father cannot come and take over you, or your sins cannot come and take over his, your father. Neither the righteousness of your parent come and say, okay, because my parents were righteous people, therefore I'll make heaven. Never, never, never. The scripture, the scripture here tells uh, is saying that the sin of the one that is dying, uh, the one that is committing this sin, he is the one that will also lead the soul to. That means that if you are committing sin, you are leading or you are luring what your, your soul to hell fire. And the same vein, the soul that turns away from the evil, that means that will repent, that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that same soul shall do what? Shall leave any child who rejects or refuses the, to follow evil ways of his what? Parent shall not bear their, their, their punishment. He refuse. If Ahaziah here determined, repented, and he did not follow the ways of his evil father, he would have been what? Saved. He would have been lived. He would have spared from the danger. So you can even see Abraham was the son of Terah. Terah, an adult worshiper. His, great, his father was an adult worshiper, but God called him out. He came out. What happened is that what Terah went, where Terah went at the end of his life was not where Abraham went. So God used him for because he detached himself. He separated himself from the evil deeds of his what? Father, do we still have to do the same thing? We cannot also worship other people, our parents, evil doings, whatever they were doing that is not good. You get to the knowledge, you know, that what you were doing was not good. Why not repent? Why not come out, out of them and separate yourself from them? My first question is, should we follow the bad example of our parents? Should we follow the bad example of our parents? No. 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 Your father used to smoke. He's smoking. He drinks alcohol. He called my, my son. Come. Hey, go and buy me alcohol. Go and buy me cigarette. And you know that he can't hurt me. My father, I can't, I can't disrespect him. He's have to, have to go. No. Will you also be a, a, an accomplice of him doing evil? But you stand by your stand and say no. This thing is not good. It's against God. And also against your health. Dad, I won't do that for you. But if you tell me to do any other thing, which is not against our creator, you and I, our creator, therefore I will go and do it. Then you have to do that. So the father was, uh, you can even look at it, when you look in the New Testament, Timothy, well, his father was what? A Greek. Someone who does not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ was a Greek, Timothy. It was his mother only. Who was also what? A child of God. But what happened? Timothy did not follow the father's deeds. Timothy did not follow it. Timothy didn't do that. He didn't do that. Now let's look at um, the, our passion, uh, sorry, our part two. The companion of Elijah. The companion of Elijah. In 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible tells us that 2 Kings 2, verse 1 said, It came to pass when the Lord would take up Elijah into heaven by a wheel wind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgad. Praise the Lord. Here we could see that Elisha was the disciple, the follower, the companion of Elijah. But Elisha was fervent, cons committed, consecrated, determined, objective. He was a, a goal-oriented companion, disciple. Elisha was a servant, a companion of Elisha. He followed him without questioning. He witnessed his masters being raptured. The rapture of the saint is very true and also biblical. The Lord revealed that he would take up Elisha to heaven without seeing death. It is worthy to note that our Lord Jesus Christ was taken up to heaven and seen by his disciple. We must also be ready and watchful for the rapture. This is possible through repentance and faith in Christ with righteous living on a daily basis. Every day. It's not yesterday I was holy. Today I'm not holy. I was holy in 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, I'm not holy. No, the life that you are living must be on checkup every minute because Christ can come. He may come at any time and he said, I will come as a thief. The time that no one knows. 
So you will not say, okay, this today I can do, I can commit this sin, then I'll go for repentance. What about as you're on the act and Christ comes? What about as you have stolen that meat and it is in your mouth and you are chewing it, not even swallowed yet, Christ comes? What about if you are with that particular evil person doing immorality? As you are in the act and Christ comes. What about as you are in stealing, as you are gossiping, as you are cheating in that exam room and Christ comes? What will happen? What will happen? What will happen? So we are to make sure that every time we are ready. So Elijah, Elisha here was aware that his master will be raptured. But he did not leave him. He was always with him. He was determined to make sure that he will see it with his eyes. And whatsoever is for him will what? Be given to him. So that's why we are seeing that in first, uh, 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 2. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 2. He told her that, And Elisha said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to battle. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to battle. He was determined. He tried to pull his okay, stay here, I'm coming, okay? He said, no, I was, told, I was following you things. It's not now that I see that the Lord wants to take you away that I will leave you. No, I will follow you. I will see everything. Since I started with you, I want to end with you. What a wonderful servant. I pray God will help us to be such in Jesus' name. Amen. Very curious man. When Elisha knew that his master would have been what? Taken up in heaven. He would have been raptured. His master stated him three times. He tested him to see how determined and committed he is. He tested him. Stay here, I'm coming. Oh, don't worry. Stay here, I'm coming. He said, no. He tested him several times. About three times in different places. Number two. The second, the, the, second, the, the sons of the prophet also knew and informed Elisha. He asked them to hold their peace. You see, the prophet, or the, the children of the prophet also came and said, Elisha, are you aware that your, your master will be taken away? He said, don't worry, you people hold your peace. I know what I'm doing. I'm aware of it. Elisha also demonstrated commitment and what? Consecration as a worthy companion. He eventually received a double portion of Elisha's what? Power or spirit. Therefore, what do we see? As children of God, what can we do? He received the power, the Holy Ghost, the anointing that uh, was on Elijah, Elijah double. That's what the Bible tells us something in Second uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you, and unto your children, and unto all that are afar off, even as many as what the Lord our God shall call. So, to be able to receive the Holy Ghost power, the Holy Ghost baptism, the Holy Ghost unction upon you, what should you do? What are the steps that we can follow? First of all, we need to have what we call the salvation experience. You need to be saved. Before anyone can receive the Holy Ghost, it's pure, it's holy. The need, man must be free from sin. He must be free from sin. He must repent and confess his sins and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He must first of all have salvation. Salvation experience. Number two, he must also be what? Sanctified. Sanctification and holiness of life and of heart. You live it. You live that holy life. You profess it. You live it. So, and it should be in your heart. And from the heart, your body will act it. Number three, faith in the promise of God. You should believe that God has promised and he will do it. He said, ask and I will give you. The same way what we are asking to God and give us, we also know that you believe that when you ask him the Holy Ghost baptism, the power, the unction, the anointing, he will give you unto you. You must have that faith in that promise. Number four, you must also have what you call the obedience. You must have obedience to God, unto the, work of, uh, to the word of God. You must be obedient to God. Obedience will lead you to do what? 
that means that you are going to be ready to do everything that God is was asking you to do. And number five, consecration to serve the Lord. You are committed, you are consecrated, you are devoted, you are totally and fully surrounded unto only God. And you are ready to do whatever you want you to do. My question number two, what are the steps to receive the Holy Spirit power? What are the steps that someone needs to follow? I mentioned five. So I want you to give me at least one one each. The steps that we need to follow to be able to receive the Holy Ghost power. You must... That is... That is... Pardon? You say you must confess your sin. So that is what? It categorizes as what? Yes, so what the word we use for that particular act of? Salvation. Salvation. So you need to be sa- saved. Confessing your sin, repenting, and those that is under the word of salvation. Uh-huh. After that, salvation is just you have not only caught the, the branches of the tree, but the tree is still there. That's salvation. Uh-huh. You need to be sanctified. Now you need to re- uproot the whole root of the tree. So that, because if you are somebody always that, when you see somebody's money lying somewhere, you know, your fingers begin to do like this. You are sitting down and you are having the tendency of going, now you are saved. Now you don't do that again. But in you see it, your fingers act. They want you to go and do it. That's called tendency. That means you need salvation, uh, sanctification. It's the sanctification that will be able to take that thing from some way, uh, from you. So the next time when you see it, nothing happens to you. You will see it, nothing will happen. But when you see some, you, are, you see when you only limit yourself as salvation, you see sin, every time you see the sin, it's, with, it's with dragging you. Should I do? Shouldn't I do? So you're fighting between the flesh and yourself and your spirit. But when the sanctification comes, you see it, nothing happens. So because the Lord has uprooted the tendency out, the Adamic nature, that taking it away. Now the three, the three, the three you must believe the promise of God. Believe the promise of God. Uh-huh. After you believe the promise of God, for? For? You live a holy life. That is holiness and righteousness. And that's what you have, or maybe you have said to be. But before that, you need to be obedient unto the word of God. To be obedient. Then you are committed and consecrated to the work of God. Last point quickly. The chariot, the chariot of Elijah. The chariot of Elijah. The chariot of Elijah. Second King chapter 2, verse 9. Someone read for us. Second King chapter 2, verse 9. Second chapter 2, verse 9. Amen. Where is the Lord? See what he said here. He said, It came to pass when they were gone over. Then Elijah said, Now Elijah, Elijah knew that now this is where my word, God will take me. So he said, Okay, now at least you have passed all the tests. Okay, now ask me what you want me to do for you. Now ask me. It's time. It's time. When I was in primary, we learned this story where this man went and got something. I don't know whether a magic calabash she went, they were telling us. And then, so, he said, the calabash asked him, tell me everything you want for me to do for you. This man, because it was in the time of hunger, hunger time, he was always asking food. Food. Your love, right? This. That's what he was asking. But one day, the king got to know about it. And then, they went, came to the house and took the calabash and went to the house. The first thing he asked was what? Uh, gold. What big, big things. He was asking only for food. And every food that he's going to eat and go and what? Uh, put it somewhere and come back the same way. So, Elijah here did not ask. Sorry, Elisha did not ask anything that is going to be made, you know, something. He asked something that will really be what? Valuable. He asked something that can really be valuable. He asked, ah, okay. 
I've worked with you. I've seen the one days you have done. You know what? And I don't want what you have. In fact, I want the double of what you have. You see that great demand? That was wonderful. Elijah did not this Elijah did not discourage him that ah what you're asking is so big. Remember, I said we're not even having you are asking me this. He didn't discourage him. But he, he gave him a condition. He gave him a condition. So you see that he saw what he did, the, all the wonders he did. He said, Ask me what you want, so that I will do it for you. Without even hesitating, he said, I pray thee. Let the double portion of the Spirit be upon me. May God help us to be wise as we are asking God and be very precise. God bless me. You only go, God bless me. God bless me. What exactly do you want God to do for you? Mention the thing. Just go, God bless me. What do you want God to do for you? Be instant. Be concise. Be precise. Be goal oriented. God, open my brain. On the TV subject, I get it not. I want this. Ask God especially and be pointed at the hand of it. God will make it. He was courageous and was uh, courageous and careful in everything he was doing. So he told and he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Look at what Elijah told him. Thou have asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, Emum, nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be unto thee, but if not, it shall not be so. He gave me a condition. If you see me as I'm taken up, whatever you want shall be given unto you. I pray God will give us wisdom in Jesus' name. And what happened? What does it mean that if we are as believers, believers to receive the power of the Holy Ghost today, what should we do? In which state should we be? As Elisha was in that time and he received that power, in which state should we be? How would he be? In which manner should we be to be able or to enable us to receive that power that came upon Elisha? That's what they told us in 2 Kings chapter 2, verse 11. It came to pass as they went on, they talked, they were talking, they were chatting. Behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them asunder, divided them, separated them. And Elisha went up by a real wind unto heaven. What happened? He, has he seen him or not? Has he seen it or not? He has seen him going up. Therefore, the condition that he gave him must what? Be fulfilled. When you look at it, you see, looking at the commitment or the comportment, the attitude, the behavior of Elisha, a believer must be diligent. You must be diligent and determined to receive the great blessing like the power of the Holy Ghost. In our time, the greatest unction that you can have from God is to have the Holy Ghost power. People think that when you are having the Holy Ghost baptism, it's to go and speak in tongues. It, we have more than that. We have more than that. More than that. The main reason why God gives you the Holy Ghost power is to do His work without fear. It to testify of Him without fear. And you have the spirit of conviction. When you are preaching the gospel, people will listen to you. You have the spirit of conviction. You are going to have also the spirit, the, 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 the gift of the spirit. That will back him up. But we, today we think anybody who is having the power of the Holy Ghost is to speak in tongues. That's all. No, it's more than that. More than that. More, far, far than that. It's more than that. So the Bible tells us in first, uh, so, sorry, Ephesians chapter one, verse, chapter, uh, chapter one, verse three. Blessed be the God of Father or, or, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spirits, all spiritual blessing in heaven places in Christ. What happened when he was going up? Let's look at. 2 Kings 2, verse 14. He said, and he took the mantle of Elisha that fell on. When he was going, his mantle what? Fell down. Elisha what? Cut it like this. Took it in his hand. That was all. Then the power that he was looking for came upon him double. As they were coming, he divided the uh, river Jordan. The same thing, Elisha did the same thing and passed. 
He was not afraid of anything. Now he was not, he's not even the double of the master. I pray God help us in Jesus' name. First of all, we must be what? Determined, diligent, before we can receive the power of the Holy Ghost. My question number three. In what state should a believer be to receive the power of the Holy Ghost Spirit today? In which state? He should be determined. And you should be diligent. You are careful in whatever you are doing. You are diligent. You are also determined. You are focused. Someone who is diligent will never be lackish, redundant. I want to do this. Shouldn't I do it? No, I won't do it. No, okay, don't worry. Tomorrow, tomorrow I'll do it. The following day I'll do it. The morrow I'll do it. No. You must make sure as you are decisive, you are determined to do it and this you are finished with it. So, what we have to do, we have to make sure that we do what the Lord wants us to do. So we should see that there's also another lesson we can learn from the attitude of the sons of the prophet. The sons of the prophet did not believe the declaration of Elisha when he told them that, hold your peace, don't worry, I know what I'm doing. But the sons of the, the, the prophet did not believe when he was telling them that he said, this guy is just uh, playing with, he just, uh, just uh, making uh, noise, okay. He will not follow the master. He said he knows it. I'm not sure he knows it. No. But they don't believe it. They didn't trust it. As Christians, we should not be like them. Unbelief is a great hindrance to receive the blessing from the Lord. When you don't believe, it's very difficult for you to receive the blessing of God. It's not going to help you to receive the blessing of God. Unbelief is a bad thing. That will hinder you from receiving the what? The blessing of God. Secondly, we are to be also what? Agent of good transformation in our schools and societies. Agent of what? Good transformation. Three, our tongue should, uh, must be also what? Guided to speak good things and not evil things. Evil things. Don't say negative things using your mouth. Go and read in what you told us. Whatever you profess using your mouth will come to pass. You have to say positive things. Question number four. What lesson can we learn from the attitudes of the sons of the prophet? What can we learn from it? The way they behaved. What can we learn from it? Both negative and positive. Yes. They did not believe. Exactly. Thank you. We should not follow that. So we should not have the spirit of what? Unbelief. Next. Unbelief. Uh -huh. So you come back to our various places of work, societies, homes, you know, associations, schools, colleges, universities. Where we find ourselves? What should we be there? What should we be there? We should be the messengers of God. We should use our tongue rather to preach the gospel. When you see the guy, the guy like, sometimes you see girls, they gather somewhere, either they're talking about one boy, or they're talking about one of the fellow girls that is following another boy, or one of their girls' friend. You meet them, oh, you meet them. But they have a lot of lectures that are going, uh, they have to go and what? Be studying. But this small time, when they go and sit down there under the trees, this is what they are going to be talking about. Either they, these two sit here, they'll be talking about politics. They sit here, they'll be talking about that. Gossiping, saying that, saying that, insulting each other. Me, I don't mind, I don't work with this girl. How about this girl? Oh, Jen, no, no. That's why she does. That's she does. And, and you also are standing there, dating your ears, dating your eyes, dating your mouth, saying, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you're also part of them. It's up to tell them the word of God or depart from them, separate yourself from them. Don't do that thing. Don't go with them. You must make sure you use your tongue to preach the gospel. Preach your, use your tongue to publish and advertise the word of God. That is going to be exactly. I pray that God will help us to be like Elisha, who really determined himself to be able to receive the power that he, his master was having, even double. Today, what are we learning from this? We are learning that as children of God today, our power that Elijah received in those days is today the Holy Ghost power. The anointing 
the Holy Ghost power, the gift of the Spirit. Whenever we are having it, we can do a lot of things. You can do a lot of things with, with God, in the name of God. And to receive those things, these are the precepts. These are the guidelines. These are the, uh, the steps that you must make sure that you are born again. You are saved. You are sanctified. You are committed. You believe in the earth, the promise of God. And you are consecrated and committed to the work of God. And it will come to pass on your life. And I pray that the Lord will help us to be devoted. that So that all the power, everything the Lord has promised to give unto us, or whatever the Lord has said, that it will come to pass, that we will be able to what? Come in our lives. And whatever you are asking God to do, you will not be dealing, darling. You will not be saying, oh, I'm not sure that what I'm going, I'm asking God will come to pass. No, you believe it and you trust it. As you are praying, be, be focused, be determined, be precise and concise. God, this is what I want. And mention the name of the thing and you continue to mention that same thing. Don't say, I want only blessing. God, I want blessing. God, I want blessing. Which one of them? Be precise. Point at the finger of the thing and the God will give you in Jesus' name. Let's be on our feet as we pray.